a great fun. I just enjoyed doing that. The, I mean, the, the putting the ferrets was just part of a, uh, a role I played as a stuntman, and I had to learn lots and lots of stunts, so I, I learned that one. It's a bit like Michael Crawford, who did uh, Barnum in Britain, and he had to, and Jim Dale over here, I believe, did it. He had to learn lots of stunts for the role, and I, that's all I did. Just, I mean, just like learning lines, taking a pair down your trousers. <laughs> Huh. You've never shown me your ferrets, or Really? Oh, right. <laughs> okay, uh, this is sort of a two-part question. Uh, kind of, sort of. Don't, don't get worried. No, 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 far away. Okay, all right. Uh, about the new season, about how many episodes are in it, and what are the names? That's the first Ooh, part. I can answer that one. Oh, sorry. Yes, no, 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 go on, I'm getting go all on. excited then, there's a question. No, what's the second question, first of all? Can you remember? Uh, okay, the second part of the question is, does the master appear in any of those episodes? Well, uh, the 25th season has, I think it's 14 episodes. The first one is the Remembrance of the Daleks, which is four episodes. And the second one, although we made it last, is the Happiness Patrol, which is three episodes, which has just finished going out. The third one is Silver Nemesis, which is also three episodes. And the fourth one is The Greatest Show in the Galaxy, which is four episodes, so put them all together and I can't count, so somebody can add them up for me. <laughs> 26, no, four, 13, 14, a lot. Okay. No, he doesn't appear. Okay, thank we've you. Got, we've got to have something left for next year. Alright. <laughs> thank you. Oh, is he coming next year? I don't know. Oh. Okay. Stop the rumor. Uh, I just yeah, stop, to, uh, that's how rumors stop. I just wanted to ask uh, Sylvester and Sophie, uh, what were the uh, what was the show that brought up the most complications for you personally in the twenty sixth season twenty fifth sorry <laughs> for me um, I think Silver Nemesis as you saw was so incredibly sorry, sorry. pressured it was <laughs> sorry uh, yes it was the time was incredible and we didn't have time we just didn't have time to do anything so it literally was a question of rehearsing all day, going home at night to learn the lines. And in fact, on the very last day of filming, we discovered a scene that we'd never rehearsed or learned. So literally five minutes before we were due to shoot it, we were, we were there looking at the script, trying to learn the lines, which is not unusual, but, it, but seeing as we'd sort of never even read it before, it was, it was all a bit um, full of hassles. And because it's the location story as well, although it was great fun to do, and it, it was brilliant to be in, in a hotel and uh, staying up late and things like that. It was <laughs> <laughs> I'm always trying to cross <laughs> um, It was incredibly pressured that way, and I think that was the most. But uh, and that's yet, yet again, all the stories. <laughs> 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 Find me up. <laughs> the, the Dalek story for me was quite difficult because obviously it was my first story actually in the role of Ace and I was sort of having to think about the character and where, where Ace was going and sort of thinking about, um, and, and we didn't know each other very well at the time, and uh, <laughs> we were sort of Bill Crosby for that, So that was difficult as well, and they all have their certain difficulties, but um, <laughs> the more it goes <laughs> You're going to have to watch tonight because I'm not going to be able to get a word in edgewise.
But it, I think it's going to end up as one of the better ones of the season. I think it's going to be a great season. He says, hopefully, touch wood. But um, <laughs> the, that one, the most difficult one to make, I think it might be one of the best. I haven't seen it though. Thank you. Yep. Uh, this is an open question. What do you think the likelihood is that the BBC will actually produce an episode here in the United States? Well, last year, there was talk of it. And I would probably wonder if they did. Uh, Lionheart vaguely got interested. The problem is money. If someone over here would actually give the BBC the money to come over here and do it, it's a very expensive job because you'd have to take all of the BBC unit, you know, the documentary you watch and all those people and, and bring them over here. It cost a fortune. That raises a follow up question. Considering the number of series that the BBC has had co producers for, yeah. is there a likelihood that a co producer will be signed on for Dr. Who in some time? Well, I, again, I don't know. I mean, I could see that's a possibility, but I, I, I don't know that side of the BBC's working, really. I mean, they, they just employ me as an actor and uh, tell me very little about what they do. I would love it. I mean, I think we'd all love it if we could come over here and make uh, Doctor Who's here. Because as I, was, I, I think one of the strange things about Doctor Who is that the galaxy is peopled with people who speak, or people or things, or who speak with BBC accents. <laughs> and you know that uh, we haven't quite, the BBC or the British haven't quite got uh, into outer space yet. <laughs> and uh, most likely the, the, the people from outer space will, should be speaking with Russian or American accents. So um, I, I think it would be rather good if we did one or two over here so that we could have some American okay, uh, extraterrestrials. Right. Holiday? The BBC? What did the Doctor Who know? <laughs> um, does Ace have a last name? And do you think of yourself as Sylvester McCoy or Patrick Ken Smith? Who, me? <laughs> um, Ace doesn't have a surname, as, as far as I know. Not yet. Anyway. It'd be a good competition, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Name, name, the name, surname. name. This. Send your suggestions Ace. directly to John Nathan Turner's office. He'll yeah. appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, do I think of myself? I'm schizophrenic. I think of myself as Sylvester McCoy, one, and I've got to be Percy James Patrick Kent Nathan Smith. <laughs> and various other names as well, aren't you? <laughs> especially people in uniforms who shout at me. <laughs> ah, you, um, do you want to, can someone give that chap a, a chair so he can sit and stand? Ah, oh, thanks. <laughs> what was your name before you changed it to so much McCoy? Ah, I just said it in a minute, a second. Percy James oh, Patrick Kent. Kent. James Patrick Kent. 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 So many of them. Percy, James, Patrick, Kent, Schmidt. <laughs> now you go away and think about that. <laughs> well, you ask the question, don't blame me. Yes? Uh, when you first agreed to do the role of the doctor, did you get to pick your own outfit? Oh, I didn't get to pick your nose. Uh, did I get to pick my own outfit? <laughs> yes, uh, the hat, you know the hat. I arrived at the interview wearing that hat. That's how I wore my hat at that time in England. <laughs> People didn't laugh, believe it or not. And I went to the interview and uh, they gave me the job because of the hat. John Nathan said I liked it. I said, well, if, that, if you want the hat, I go with it. He said, oh, OK, you can play the doctor. And then I, I said I wanted lots of pockets in my jacket because I knew that I'd have to have my script so I could quickly look at it. Because I'm always looking at my script. I'm not known for carrying. And if you notice, if you watch the shows, but the pocket, one pocket's full at the beginning of, you know, the. This may be not the story, but the beginning of the shooting, and then slowly the, this leg gets thinner and thinner as each page is torn out, stuck in the other pocket. It's, yeah. like, a, it's like the in tray and the out tray. Yes, I can even that. And they all get crumpled up and go in the pocket. Uh, I have two questions. One, what is happening with that movie, and are you going to bring back Susan for a guest appearance of the, of, uh, the regular series? Well, I don't know anything about the film. I don't know anything at all. You'd have to ask those people about that. Um, the, then that goes that I'm making it. Uh, Susan, Susan who? Susie Q? No, Susan was the original time traveler of the doctor. Oh yes, of course. I'm just wondering, are you going to bring back? You remember her? Yes. Yes, you are. I was doing my homework last night. Um, well, I was trying to get a degree in who. <laughs> I shouldn't think so. It's up to me. She's a bit older to be. I mean, she's older than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, she. I mean, she was my granddaughter. I mean, you know, she's kind of 
She doesn't yeah. look it though. I, I, I met her at a convention in, in England and uh, it was really great because there she was, the first ever companion, and there was me, the latest companion. And it was really strange to think that we spanned that length of time. She doesn't look much different actually. Still screaming. <laughs> Thank you. Next. Yes, yeah, so a question for Sophie. Uh, I'd just like to know before you did like Doctor Who, were there any like uh, movies or television shows we might have seen you in? Fred not. No, the, my very first uh, appearance in front of a television camera was that scene where um, in Dragonfly where Kane tempts me with the coin. And I, can I knew Chris Clough had told me that there were going to be big close ups. And, I mean, I just about knew what that meant, but um, <laughs> I, I was absolutely terrified. And, and when I get very nervous, I get this strange thing. I mean, people have, nerves affect them in different ways. People's <coughs> knees wobble or their hands shake. Or I have this terrible thing where I can't look up or I feel as though I can't look up. And I, I feel as though my, my chin's stuck to my chest. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> and so I was standing there thinking that this was happening. And so actually to see, to see these close-ups and the finished product and realised that my chin wasn't stuck to my chest is actually something a really relief to me. But that was my... <laughs> it's a relief to all of us, actually. <laughs> By the way, thank you, and uh, we'd like to welcome you to the United States. We hope you enjoyed your visit here. Thank you very much, and have a wonderful time.
Sylvester, so first of all, I like your tail. Uh, I have great hat. I have in my pocket a certain stage prop from Time and the Ronnie. <laughs> I was wondering if you'd do a scene. Arrest that man, he's kicking the cylinder. <laughs> Drums, timpani. I mean, I can. Uh, we need a bit of background music, so uh, can I suggest that you hum my tune? <laughs> and sit. Sophie can sing. Sophie sings beautifully. Can you sing? <laughs> but again, you need music, don't you? And a backing. Why don't you go? Uh, you could do. A bum, 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 bum. You know that old tune? Have you heard it? <laughs> okay. I, I, after a count of uh, a one, two, six, seven. Give us some music and we'll play the timpani. <laughs> Can't hear anything. Come on, louder. You want a key? <laughs> well, yeah, I'll, just, I'll play Yeah, one more. Uh, 
since the doctor is a bright scientist and you have to memorize all those long words, how do you memorize them? <laughs> <laughs> how do I memorize them? Yeah, those long sentences. Oh, I, I keep, keep asking Sophie, I say, Sophie, what do I say? What do I say? I really he keeps looking at the script all the time. He, he, he turns around and he's back to camera and goes, <laughs> <laughs> Do you understand what the words mean? I didn't. Those long words, do you understand what they mean? Yes. <laughs> for you two youngsters. I <laughs> um, well, one, how did the name Ace come about, and are we going to see into her past at all? Ace came about because, I don't know, I mean, you've got the same did you use the Did you use the name Ace? Um, was it your idea? Uh, no, it wasn't my idea. It was actually um, scripted. That was, that was the original name that was in the script. Okay. Um, and it came about from a Sort of, it was, it's a nickname, obviously, in Dragonfire. You get to mm -hmm. hear that Dor uh, she's actually called Dorothy, um, which she doesn't like, so she prefers the name Ace. Mm -hmm. And um, you must have the same sort of teenage slang over here, like we have right. Ace and Wicked. You have bad. Mega, yeah, yeah. Right. Bad. We have wicked. We have wicked. You say tomato, we say tomato. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Either it, or either. Okay. Is it a popular Cockney expression? Is that okay. No, not not Cockney. It's just it's sort of street, street slang. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we are we going to see in the next couple of episodes? Are we going to see into a past at all? We haven't got time really. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, no, that, 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 I mean not this season that we've just done. I mean, yeah. the writers okay. might write something next season because Sophie's going to do it. All right. Uh, and one question for Sylvester. Um, was it? Um, nice working with the seasons. Uh, you work with like lots of different people um, in your acting career, and you work you working with uh, Sophie. Sophie now, but how is it like it's working? With it's the age. It's just yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You're past fifty. And the, the oh, she don't remember that. <laughs> but um, did you like working with Bonnie Langford because she was such a seasoned actress and a young one at that? Yes, she Bonnie now since she was four. Yeah, uh, working and um, she was 20 million by the time I worked with her. <laughs> and, and yeah, she was great. She was great to work with. She's um, an amazing, an amazing institution, Bonnie, in her own right. Really. She was. It was amazing for me to work with her as well because obviously I've I've always seen her. I mean, she's she's reasonably near the same age as me, and yet mm -hmm. she's had such an amazing amount of experience. And um, to work with somebody who was such a professional was very very helpful for me in my first. I mean, for me, it was, you know, I was going into the studio and, and saying, what's that, and what's that, and, and she was very, very helpful to me in that respect. And, That's great. And you, you, so you took out the one? Yeah, we did. That's great. So, yeah. Keeping him on his toes, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> in the time of the Ronnie, when you played the spoons, I want to know if that was ad libbed and if so, why, and if we'll be seeing any more of it in the future, as in those little surprises. Yeah, um, well, what happened was the spoon pie. <laughs> Thank goodness you were going to stoop, that person in the front row wouldn't have been able to see. Um, yes, the spoons, what happened there was we were actually making the show, and we were on location, and they had a little party in the hotel one night, and people did the party piece. Uh, yeah, the, the wardrobe master dressed up in drag, and that kind of thing, the usual things, and people sang a song, and, I happened to play the spoons, and John JMT thought that was a rather good idea, and suggested I did that as the doctor. And I thought he was joking. <laughs> but they wrote that scene in, and I was a lucky man, and had to play the spoons all over um, Kate O'Mara's front. <laughs> you know Kate O'Mara, don't you? She was in uh, Dysentery or something. What did you do? <laughs> Dynasty. Uh, Dynasty. She was in a program once. And uh, I was much envied because of playing the spoons all over her. Do I do it again? Yes.
I hope I'm. Uh, but when when we got the script for the final story, which was at the time Silver Nemesis, wasn't it? It was going to be shown last. Uh, the first thing I did was to look through to the back of the script and see whether my name was still at the end. <laughs> <laughs> that way, I guess I'd be in the next season. Um, and it wasn't. It was still there, and it and. I don't get blown up or exploded or anything like that before the end of the season, so I hope I'll be there next year. Um, but we never really get to hear much, do we? Until the sort of we're, we're always the last people to hear about these things. Yes, so we mean, apparently the next season is going ahead, and there was this launch party last week that we went to to celebrate that, but we weren't actually told that. So no, I, I just overheard uh, the producer telling someone that we were doing another season. Oh, they were good, that's good. <laughs> And then I kind of hung around a bit and thought, well, I wonder who's playing the doctor. <laughs> <laughs> it seems I am, so. Um, it's, very, it's very bizarre. It's not. I mean, my contract is actually for three years. I knew that if they did another season, they'd most likely have me because I'm under contract. But um, how long, I have no idea. The one doctor. I mean, the thing is, if I state, stated, made a statement about that, something dreadful would happen. Because one doctor uh, wanted to be the longest serving doctor, he made this announcement. He ended up only doing two years. <laughs> I'm not going to make that mistake. <laughs> Yet. They run and hide behind the couch because it's on. They're frightened. 
Well, I watch it too. When I come on, I run and hide behind the couch. <laughs> <laughs> but I do watch it, yes. Um, and do you know anything about whether the character Glitz is going to be reappearing in any future episodes? Uh, uh, Glitz, I, I, uh, is not appearing in the ones that we've just done. I wouldn't be at all surprised if he did reappear because he's very popular and uh, he's much liked from Britain as well. Sorry? Bonnie would have to come back, yes. Maybe he could have lost Bonnie, or maybe... Uh, I mean, he, I don't know, maybe Bonnie should come back. Yes, that'd be interesting. We could have an argument. <laughs> Thank you. Next, please. Uh, first, will the buyer be back? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> well, not this season, anyway. Oh, man. But I don't know. The next season, who knows? Yeah, I mean, I'm only talking about the season that we've done in England, yes. not the season that you've watched or haven't watched here. I think it's very confusing all over America. The different, the different areas. You have different seasons and some areas. We find out what the Time Lords did to the Master when they call him. Uh, again, I don't. Not in this season. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your enthusiasm. Yes, please. I'm sorry about GMT as well. <laughs> Um, <laughs> two things. Last April, there appeared a report in one of the uh, fan newsletters about a 25th season that uh, turned out to be an April Fool's joke, and I was wondering... <laughs> <laughs> she obviously had something to do with it. I was wondering uh, how involved you were with it. She was stabbed by a spoon. <laughs> I was no way involved in it. I, I, Sophie, it seems... No, I, I was told off. Really? Tell us what happened. Yeah. Oh, well... It was a sort of, it was a collaboration, wasn't it, Joan? Perhaps Joan Desaro could stand up and wave. <laughs> I didn't get told off. He didn't get told off, he was all right. Now what happened was, the, the newsletter came out, and, um, and I, I took some photographs. Um, it was just, it was a joke, it was an April Fool's joke. Um, I took some photographs, well, I didn't take them because I couldn't, because I was in them. But somebody else took some photographs of me, uh, looking as though I was lying dead on, on the floor. And um, a lot of people were actually believed this newsletter and um, John was a bit cross with me because I hadn't actually asked if I could I could do this. <laughs> and um, and so he was getting a, a lot of mail saying, no, <laughs> what on earth is going on? Why is Ace being killed off? And she's only just appeared. And so um, I got my wrist slapped and... Uh, <laughs> but I thought it was really funny. <laughs> I, uh, I read in a magazine article that you two have a sort of contest going on as to who can do more stunts. And I'd like each one of you, if you could say, who do you think is winning? Uh. <laughs> I think Sophie's winning. She gets to crash through glass windows and get blown up more than I do. I think it's very unfair. I've been counting the amounts of blown up she's been blown up. She was blown up quite a few more times than I. <laughs> I'm not talking to her. Huh? <laughs> Here's a question I'm posing to Mr. McCoy over. Uh, now, I find I found in the history of Doctor Who, each doctor had a different way of addressing themselves when they were asked who they were. For instance, when John Pertwee played the role, he was at, he said he was Doctor John Smith, and something like that. Uh, how do you, in character, address yourself? Uh, if you were asked to introduce yourself uh, in various scenes of the show? I just say I'm the doctor, really. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, I have three questions. They're all short. First of all, uh, Sylvester, in the first story you were in, you had a tendency to mix colloquialisms such as time and tide smells of snowman. Waits for no man, who's waiting, let's go. Um, are you gonna keep doing that? Well, no, it's, it seems to have got lost, really, which is a pity, because I quite enjoyed that. I tried to keep yes. it going as long as possible in the first season. No, I mean, the, 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 the very first one, I think maybe there's a little too many, or too many little things like that, but then it, it stayed for the first season, but now it's gone completely. There's one. There is one, I managed to get one in, did I? Oh, good. You did. Tom, Dick, and who, Harry? <laughs> okay. Um, Sophie, um, are you going to follow in the tradition of Doctor Who heroines by screaming in one or more episodes? No, 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 no. <laughs> Well, I don't want to scream. <laughs> he 
screamed when he sees me coming. <laughs> there, there, was, um, there was one moment in the filming of the Happiness Patrol when word came down from upstairs through Gary Downey. Again, we were very pushed for time. And uh, a, a word came from upstairs, um, Sophie, a few screams, please. And I said, nope. And, they said, and Gary was getting very irritated with me. Just screams. But... Um, but I managed to get away with that one, and I did some loud yells instead. <laughs> but they certainly weren't screams. And now the third and final question directed to both of you. I see that both of you have a tendency to like play with facial expressions. Could you explain to us, each of you, which one's your favorite, and then perform it for us? <laughs> So 
And we wanted the audience to believe uh, that character existed. So in the program, we put Sylvester McCoy played by Sylvester, no, Sylvester McCoy played by Sylvester McCoy. And they invented a whole life for him, how he left the Newton Grammar School at 15, went to India, started with gurus and all that stuff. <laughs> and people believed it. I mean, that was amazing. So I thought, what a nice name, I'll keep it. <laughs> but it was never... Sometimes people would say it was Sylvester, sometimes Sylvester, sometimes Sylvester. They were very confused. So I defined it. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll work it out as Sylvester. I was playing Stan Laurel at the time. And Stan Laurel, uh, he uh, was called Stanley Jefferson. Stan Jefferson. That was 13 letters. And someone pointed out to him, there were 13 letters in his name, you should change it. So he changed it to Stan Laurel. And well, while I was doing that, I thought, how many letters in my name? So with Sylvester McCoy, there are 13. So with Sylvester, the 14th, I thought, I don't believe any of this, but I'll go for 14 anyway, just in case. <laughs> and um, Sophie, how did you ever become a companion? Were you a model? Were you in acting school? How did you get your break? Did somebody just walk up to you on the street and say, hey, how would you like to be a companion? <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
close to the end of um, the amount of time that we had planned for this because we do want to get everybody through the autograph line. So if we could have first time questioners only, I would appreciate it. And we'll try to move as quickly as we can so that everybody who wants to ask a question in the public forum can do so. And we will start with this lovely young lady in pink. Um, will the Ronnie ever appear in other shows? Yes, uh, well, I wouldn't be at all surprised if the Ronnie will come back. I She's very popular. Ronnie. that you use quarries for LA landscapes. Why do you do this? <laughs> well, have you ever been to alien landscapes? <laughs> you didn't make quarries. <laughs> yes, uh, that's true. We do do quarries quite a lot, really. Um, there are many uh, quarries around Britain. And, um, I was thinking of doing a book, Doctor Who's Guide to Quarries in England. <laughs> planets they have been, you know, the planets I have been. It's, it, it, it's the most alien place we've got in England, a quarry. They find it difficult to find places without very obvious 20th century connotations like uh, pylons or, or sort of cables and things like that. So quarries don't tend to have so many obvious 20th century things in them. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> On, on the end of, uh, oh, through Dragonfire, there's that little girl, and at the end of it, the last scene is on her, and I got to that, and I said, huh, and my wife said, you know, it must mean something, but I don't have a clue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what, did, is she just there to be a little girl, or is I think she was there as kind of a, a sci-fi, you know, she started, she kind of pops in all the way through it. Maybe not as much as she should have done, I think, when I watched bits, it. Bits were cut. Yes, because she, she, it was just like, there was only one person on that planet really knew what was happening. You know, the little girl. She knew that we had arrived from out of wherever we came from. She'd seen it arrive. She kept trying to say, look, 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 this man, you know, TARDIS. And said, oh, go away. <laughs> and it, it was a rather, to read it, it was rather nice, in reading it. But in the editing, I think we took out too many bits of her, and it kind of got lost. So all the time she was just watching and seeing the adventure happen. My only question is, I, I have to find out why the doctor never falls in love. Like, like, like he had the Romana. Of course, yeah, who was the grandma? He had, the Romana was one of the companions. Yes. Yes, uh, also the, uh, somebody over here said, they said, uh, who exactly, who was Susan, Susan Foreman? I know it's the granddaughter, but who was, uh... Well, yes, maybe that partly answers your question. Um, yeah, I'm often been asked why he doesn't fall in love, but then I think, well, the very first doctor was a grandfather, wasn't he? So, you, mm -hmm. um, I mean, unless they do things differently on Gallifrey. Um, <laughs> maybe they do do things differently on Gallifrey. Gallifrey. Galloway. Um, <laughs> he, uh, he ended up with a granddaughter, didn't he? Susan. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know, really. Uh, this is one of those conventions. 900 years is a long life. 25 years of that is a very short time. Maybe he's just getting over one love affair and he's just going through another one. <laughs> <laughs> Who can tell? You've got to ask him. You know, you don't know. Are you going to have a Doctor Who canine? Mm, I don't know. Not that I've heard. Not in this season. Canine, some, something that I always remember yeah. and, and liked a lot. It's a problem, canine, because I've talked to other people about that. And uh, it's a bit like the Daleks, really. Canine's a robotic thing. It's got to be electronically run. And therefore, it needs to be on a flat surface. And also, it goes rather slowly. So the actors are kind of have to kind of pretend to be running. <laughs> and all that stuff. And then hang around for that damn dog. Catch up. <laughs> on the earth where we fill the planets. It keeps falling over and comes oh, 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 clunk. <laughs> so you just take a lot of time and energy. So I think it might not come back unless someone invents a really good canine that can, you know, run about and jump. Ooh, like a hover canine. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> How much chaos ensued when the Dalek exploded in remembrance too well? How much chaos? I heard there's a gigantic explosion. Oh right? yeah, that was on location. That was brilliant. Cause because I'm very interested in explosions, it's not just eggs. <laughs> it's not, it's typecasting. Yes. <laughs> I 
I'm not sure the people at the Marriott appreciate that. <laughs> a couple of cans of nitro and nine. But, <laughs> but the, what happened was, um, on a couple of occasions, it, we were filming on Easter Monday, and um, it was a bank holiday, very quiet, um, and we were in the streets around Waterloo Station in London. And w they set a whole load of charges under the arches of the railway bridge. And, of course, they didn't allow for the sort of echo of the explosion. And what happened was the charge was set off and set off everybody's burger alarms within <laughs> five mile radius. And we got car to, alarms as well. Or yes, car alarms. alarms. We, we got um, five fire engines screeched along <laughs> because nobody had warned the police that this was going to happen. Yes, and, and, oh, yes. Yeah, I'm going to say it was amazing because the old and it also was on Easter. It was the 60th anniversary of the Easter Rebellion in Dublin. <laughs> station and the, the, what the, the police, the railway police came belting along. They thought the IRA had exploded and let out bombs. <laughs> and, and they all came, and they came, came round the corner, fire engines and ambulances, and the first to arrive was an ambulance. It screamed round the corner. The smoke was belching out of this hole where the explosion had been. And they screamed to a halt. And suddenly, the, 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 the driver didn't believe his eyes, because three Daleks came round the corner. <laughs> six Daleks behind the gates to look as though we were going to advance in from this yard. And uh, they set the charges, they got everybody back, and, uh, and we were sitting in the, um, the scanner, which is what you can you, you see all the monitors, and um, we, we went for the better view. And this huge explosion happened that rocked the van, and, and luckily the police had been informed by this time. But the smoke cleared away, and behind the smoke, with the Daleks just <laughs> like that, and th they'd blown up the Daleks as well. I guess that was a bit of a mistake. <laughs> Thank you. We have three more, and then we will be adjourning for the autograph line. Hello. In a controlled fashion, I hasten to add. Sylvester, when you were first picked for the Doctor, what did you think about the continued rumors about the Doctor turning female? Being a Scot, we in Scotland wear dresses, they're kilts. <laughs> so maybe that may have been a sop to, uh, to, to the feminist lobby. I don't know really. Um, I don't. I, I know. I hadn't heard this. I, I know there was talk about it then. I don't see any reason why there shouldn't be a female doctor person. I'm not. I mean, I'm glad there isn't because I got the job at the moment. <laughs> oh, one more quick one. Whatever happened to the little girl's teddy bear from Dragonfly? <laughs>
Sylvester, you seemed quite surprised when you reached for that little thing and it jumped at you. I wouldn't know if that was actually in the script or if it was ad-libbed by someone. It was ad-libbed, I had it. I, was, I, I saw it, because they had that puppet there, just part of the setting, part of the, the group of outer, uh, you know, uh, celestial people, things. And um, I just suddenly thought, hey, would it be a good idea if it bit me? And the director said, yeah, it would be a good idea. So it did. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you all for your attention. I'd like to thank Sylvester and the